So in graphic design, one of the great ways to apply the illusion of depth to your images is to use a drop shadow. Not only could you use drop shadows to apply distance between your foreground and background subjects, but you could also use it as an aesthetic quality to add to the look of your designs. So how can you actually add drop shadows to your text in Adobe Photoshop? Cool, so we're in Adobe Photoshop, and as you can see, what I've got is just a very simple text object, just the words drop and shadow. And what we're going to do is actually apply a drop shadow to this layer by using layer styles. So if you're unsure as to what layer styles are, they're simply things that you can apply to your layer to create different effects. So for example, you have bevel and emboss, which adds a 3D look to your text. You could add an inner shadow or an outer glow, but what we want to do is of course add a drop shadow. So what we need to do first is just make sure you have the correct layer selected. So make sure you have drop shadow selected. So you can either go to layer and then go to layer style and then select drop shadow from here. Or another way to do it is actually to go to the layers panel itself, find the layer that you want to use and double click on it using your left mouse button. Both ways will actually bring you to the layer style option, except by using the second technique, we actually need to select the drop shadow option. Now, if you can't see all the settings for the drop shadow itself, what you also need to do is make sure you actually have the text selected. So it's not enough just having the box selected in order to get the settings, you also need to have the text selected. And as you can see, now we can see our drop shadow settings. So there's quite a few settings for the drop shadow itself, and this allows us to customize the shadow that we have. So I'm just gonna quickly increase the size just so we can see what we're actually working with a bit more clearly. Now immediately, the first thing that you might want to be able to do is change the color of your shadow. So at the moment for you, it's probably automatically set to black. So as you can see, you can select the color right here and it will bring you to a color picker. So you can select any color that you might want to use. So black, if you want to create the illusion of depth, but you might also want to add a color. This might just be an aesthetic choice that you have. I'm just gonna to stick to a blue slash purple, just because that appears slightly clearer on our darker background. So the second option that we have is the ability to change the blending mode. At the moment, it's set to normal. Yours will probably be set to multiply if it's automatically on the default, but you can select any of these other options. Once again, I'm gonna leave it as normal for now, just because it makes it slightly clearer to see on our darker background. Next, we have the opacity, which is obviously the transparency of our drop shadow. So we can change the angle of our drop shadow, which affects the direction of the light source. So a drop shadow is automatically created anytime that a light source is blocked by something on screen. In this case, it's our text. As you can see at the moment, the light source is probably in the top left-hand corner here because our drop shadow is appearing on the bottom right of our object. So you can change that by adjusting the angle right here. And as you can see, the light source would now be appearing from the bottom left-hand corner right now. Another thing is you also can see that on a small preview right here. So I'm just gonna leave that slightly close to what we had originally. So if you want to be able to change the distance of your drop shadow from your actual text itself, you can adjust this slider right here, which affects the distance so you can make it go quite far away or keep it nice and close, something like that. So next you can also adjust the spread and size of the drop shadow. So I'm actually gonna increase the distance slightly just to make it slightly easier to see what these actually do. So the spread actually has to do with the size of the layer mask before it's actually blurred. In order to keep it simple, it just either increases or decreases the blur of your drop shadow. So as you can see, if it's low, it's going to have quite a blurry edge. But if it's 100, it's going to have quite a sharp and crisp looking edge. The size on the other hand is the size of the drop shadow. So the higher the size of your drop shadow, the more opportunity there is to actually blur that area using the spread. Then lastly, you can also actually affect the quality of your drop shadow. So first of all, you can adjust the noise and increase the amount of noise in your drop shadow. But furthermore, you can also adjust the contour of your drop shadow. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly increase the distance and the spread just to make it slightly easier to see what the contour will do. So the contour actually controls how the opacity works over the spread of your drop shadow. So for example, at the moment, it's just a smooth gradient between 100% opacity to 0% opacity. But what you can also do is actually change this by pressing on the arrow right here and control how the opacity is being applied to your drop shadow. As you can see, you can select any of these options and get quite a few interesting combinations. You can actually also affect the contour itself just by pressing on the image. And as you can see, you get a curve editor right here by which you can actually control the direction of the contour. So that essentially is how you can apply a drop shadow to your text in Adobe Photoshop. There's a few different ways you can actually customize the drop shadow to create a different look and hopefully appeal to the aesthetic of your overall design.
If you're interested in learning how you can create a picture in text effect in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video on the right of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video and do subscribe to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.